close that door. Every once in a while, Honda will knock one out of the ballpark, and that's exactly what they did 36 years ago with this V65 Sabre. This bike was 120 rear wheel horsepower, 11 seconds stock out of the box. Fast, shaft drive, liquid cooled V4 technological wonder, triple disc brakes, long travel suspension in a seating position that'll give you all day long, 100 mile an hour comfort. This bike's been owned by the same owner for over 30 years. Uh, it's a two owner bike with 19,191 original miles on it. And it's all original right down to the paint job, the handlebars, everything about it. And it's in absolutely stunning condition. I've not seen, we've had a bunch of them come through that need restorations, but we haven't had a single one like this, and the only reason the guy sold it is he was moving to Arizona and needed the money. So um, this, this bike is absolutely pristine, and it's been gone through by Jeff Castine, the manic mechanic, uh, to take it to the next level. I'll go over the work order for it, but uh, watch the Honda commercial that we'll hopefully have integrated into the video, and you'll see this is a straight up badass. Even by today's standards, today's power cruisers generally don't have as much power as this. In fact, put, put it in perspective, Harley-Davidson has never produced a uh, V-Twin production, V-Twin, uh, the, the Dyna S, which is the fastest production Harley I've ever ridden, the 2017 110 cubic inch, almost twice, twice the motor size. This is, a, I think it's 1139 cc's. I don't remember going by memory. It's a uh, V65 Sabre. Uh, they made a Magna, which is more of a cruiser style one than this. I like this one the best. The paint job on it, the black, the red, it's just off the hook, and it's stock right down to the pipes on it. It's got a uh, brand new front tire on there, done up, uh, new set of tires on it, new battery, and I'll go over the work order. I've also got the, um, the title right here. Uh, he's owned it since 1994, clean title. And I've got a, a nice work order here I can go over with all the details of everything we did to the bike. It's ready to run. Just needs a new, new, new owner, new rider. The work order here, the bike was Cosmetically, we, we steam cleaned it, hand washed it, uh, degreased the bike, uh, touched up the motor and the frame and the center stand on the kickstand of the black on that was touched up a little bit. Um, the, uh, all the chrome and aluminum on the bike was polished. The paint was buffed and waxed with carnauba paste wax. The original seat cover, as you can see, is intact and in outstanding condition. That's one of the first things that would go. Typically, a bike from the 80s like this, most of them we see have cracked seats and uh, wear and tear and rust. This one was stored indoors and loving, lovingly cared for and maintained. The um, technical side, we put a new UASA battery in it. Um, the carbs were removed, cleaned. Uh, the float needle, needle valves were replaced and they were uh, reassembled and reinstalled on the bike by Jeff Cassine, who's probably one of the best carb, uh, four-cylinder carb mechanics we, we've, we've ever met. Uh, all the fluids in the bike are new. It's got new oil, new front brake fluid, new rear brake fluid. The uh, brakes were bled and serviced. It has VP, non-ethanol fuel in it. You can leave that fuel in the tank for 10 years, it'd be fine. It has a brand new K&N air filter in there. So um, the pilot jets were also micro drilled, which is a trick that Jeff has. The pilots come a little bit lean from the factory. He micro drilled those and uh, reassembled it, tuned it, set the fuel screws, uh, put new spark plugs in it. Um, he also disassembled the front, both the front brake calipers, both of them, uh, cleaned and honed them and uh, flushed and filled and bled the system. So it's been totally gone through. The work order came out to $1,500. And I've got a little 
um, history on the bike for you. Americans love performance, so Honda gained lots of fans with a V65 Saber. The bike stood out from the crowd not only because of its record-shattering quarter-mile performance, but also because it was powered by a, a V4 in a sea of inline fours. The 65 that the motor was referring to is, is a displacement. Metrically, it pack, pack, packed 1,098 cc's. So I was off a little bit, 1,098 cc's. The Saber is a high-tech performance machine that broke the mold. Not a cruiser, not a standard or a sport bike. The Sabre had a style all its own. It boasted the kind of stump pulling engine performance that the inline fours of the day couldn't match. The power plant featured liquid cooling, twin cam heads, a six speed overdrive gearbox, and a low maintenance shaft drive system. On top of that, the Sabre is smooth, versatile, and comfortable enough for all day touring. Though the V65 engine debuted a year earlier in the Magna, a machine that featured a cross between cruiser and drag bike styling, the, the 84 Sabre galvanized public opinion of Honda's newly minted V4 engine configuration. Until then, Japanese high performance was defined by inline fours. Honda did offer V4 400s for the Japanese market in 82, but the V65 raised the performance bar with a broad torque range combined with a serious top end rush, which I just got to experience it out there on the road, third gear, you open it up. When the, when the attack starts climbing, man, it pulls like a freight train. Uh, my hot rod Harley, my, my CVO Dyna, which costs $27,000 new and has a $5,000 engine build on it, is only putting down 105 rear wheel horsepower. This out of the box put down 120. It's absolutely, it absolutely hauls. And, and that, that top end rush is, is something you gotta experience. Four valves per cylinder, relatively mild cams, an efficient induction system with straight shot intake tracks, clean burning combustion chambers, and a quartet of 36 millimeter constant velocity carbs gives the V65 Sabre it's the most powerful production motorcycle engine available, pumping out a walloping 121 horsepower. The mighty Sabre could launch from a standstill to 50 miles per hour in just 2.31 seconds. Zero to 50 in 2.31 seconds. In addition, the 90 degree V4 package was physically narrower than the transverse four cylinder engines. Although the V4 power plant may have been slightly longer than an inline four engine, the Sabre's forward bank of cylinders helped ensure sufficient front end weight bias for excellent steering. With its well-balanced chassis and muscular engine, the V65 earned a reputation as a versatile motorcycle that was fun to ride more than, than just short, straight bursts down the drag strip. California Jim, Californian Jim Newbury rode his Sabre to a fifth place finish at the 1984 Iron Butt Rally and improved one position the following year up the fourth on the same bike, demonstrating that this bike was comfortable and reliable for the thousand mile days that they could put down on it. And that's, that's why none of these exist anymore, guys. That's why you just don't see these out there because they were so fun to ride. Most people rode the wheels off of them and a lot of them, it's so fast, a lot of people get, get in over the head and end up dumping it. So to find one that's mint original like this, it's a, it's a unicorn, guys. It, it's a, uh, in, the way, in the words of Shade Tree Surgeon, it's a white whale. I just watched a video of his, he put out about the top five motorcycles you can't buy that you wish you could. And the V65 Sabre was at the top of his list um, as number one, just a kick-ass machine. Indeed, the Sabre proved the versatility of Honda's family of V4s, which included machines as, as diverse as the custom V65 Maga, Magna and the Interceptor sport bike line. The Sabre's unique balance of performance and versatility became a hallmark of Honda's V4 machines in the years to come. So this bike was made by Honda from 82 to 85. This is the 80, 84 model. It was one of a group of Japanese motorcycles known as the time um, to uh, just be blazingly fast. So this, this goes on. There's a couple more pages of, of information here. Um, I'll just breeze through this quickly, see if there's anything else that speed. In 1984, Cycle Magazine reported that they achieved a 0 to 60 mile per hour time in 3.04 3 seconds and an 11.2 second, 121.69 miles, uh, miles per hour quarter mile run with, with a Sabre 65. There you have it, 11, cycle, cycle Magazine, 11.2 seconds, 121.69 miles per hour. That is straight up moving, folks. So the history of the bike, the pedigree of the bike, it speaks for itself. Uh, the original factory paint still has a nice shine on it. Um, the gauges look like they're brand new. Electrically, the, the motorcycle is a 10. Everything works perfectly. All the idiot lights, uh, the horn, the turn signals, brake light, typical Honda quality on the switches and all the, um, mechanical and electrical functions of the bike are exactly as they were out of the box. It even has a stock original black anodized 
a black chrome exhaust system. Just a kick-ass piece, the gold badges. Um, it's beautiful. It's 36 years old. It has a little bit of, is it 36? 80, yeah, 36 years old. A little bit of patina on it. Uh, I, I could probably point out a couple little nicks back here on, on the grab bar. Uh, it does have a little uh, ding in the tank that a dent magician could take out. Um, but other than that, you know, she's a beautiful piece. Fully documented with the title and the work order for what was done to it, she's ready to go. I wouldn't hesitate to take this to an iron butt rally tomorrow and school the new bikes. Look at the, look at the front forks. The, um, the chrome on the front forks is, is beautiful. There's no pitting on the chrome. Uh, the front aluminum forks, the rims, the paint is nice and fresh on the rims. The tires are brand new. The front tire is brand new. It still has the nubs on it, okay? Turn signals are mint. Uh, just a beautiful piece. The aluminum on the side of the engine. The, even the black or the original black paint on the engine cases, which normally would be you know faded or chipped on a bike like this, uh, this bike has not sat out in the sun. It was garaged since new, and That's and she's beautiful. It's beautiful. I want to correct you. It is a matched set of Dunlops. The front is new. The rear is newer, but it is not a new rear tire. There's plenty of tread. Though. Yeah, uh, these things go through rear tires. Uh, so th this one's 95 to 98 percent tread. Uh, the front one's brand new. So. Match set of Dunlops. It's ready to go, folks. Um, if you're thinking of getting one of these, bid often, bid high, because you're not going to find another one like this. This is something I'd roll right into the museum exactly the way it is without doing a damn thing to it. So um, and it does have the VP fuel in there and a new battery, so it should be ready to go for the spring. If you have any questions, give us a call, 860-454-7024. Would love to keep this bad boy in the museum if you want to leave it on display here. We put this in the Honda section at the New England Motorcycle Museum. Motor sounds brand new. No valve clatter, no, no, no engine noises other than the, the m melody of music coming out the exhaust pipe here. Guaranteed it runs better than it did new with the micro drilled pilot jets that Jeff uh, carefully hand tuned. So she's ready to go folks. Good luck bidding on it. God bless Honda. For kick, making kick ass bikes like this, and God bless America. Hey, a better halftime show for the Super Bowl would have been, would have been a big smoky burnout on this thing. You all would have been happier.